what is up everybody and welcome back to another tutorial I promised I would give you guys an episode about symbols and this one's gonna be all about the graphic symbol it's gonna be a lot of fun so let's jump right into it to start off let's go ahead and create a shape I'm gonna grab this crazy star that I love so much and I'll put it right in the center and now we double click to select it and right click and go down to convert to symbol and I'll just call it star and then you'll see this drop down menu has three different options we're gonna be using a graphic select that and click OK and now you can see it's been converted to a symbol and it has this little circle in the center and this circle is so that you can tell if and where this symbol is connected to another object and I'll show you exactly what that means we're gonna do something fun to try and understand it so create a keyframe pretty far out here and right click on frame 1 and select add classic motion guide and that adds this guide layer with the same amount of frames as our original layer so we're going to go to the first frame of the guide layer and select the pencil tool and draw a nice squiggly line anywhere you want. And if you're like me and you don't like these hard sharp edges, you can go down here to the bottom of the tools panel and select this icon and click smooth. And now undo that line, draw a new one, and that's much better. So now we go to the first frame of layer one and drag this shape to the start of the line and see how it automatically snaps to the line and that middle circle goes dark that's how you know it's connected to the line and now we go to the last frame make sure you're still on layer one and not the guide layer and drag the shape to the end making sure it snaps to the line now we go up to frame one and right click and insert classic tween then go to the beginning and click play and it's perfect that worked nicely and you can actually hide the path if you go up to the guide layer and click the black dot underneath this little eyeball icon you can turn the visibility of the layer off and just have the shape by itself one more note about this before we move on you can actually change the line after you've made it so I'll delete this draw a new one and you can even include some loop-de-loops if you want to and make sure to drag the beginning shape to the right place and then the end frame as well and now when we play it this time that's awesome. Lots of people actually have issues with guide paths, and they can be pretty finicky to work with. I've even had to go back and watch some of my own tutorials to get them perfect. But what we just did is the easiest and quickest way to do them, and you can imagine all the different ways to use them in your own animations. So now we're going to do something a little bit more complex. So let's create another shape, and right click and convert to symbol. I'll call it star symbol. And we're still working with graphics, so hit OK. And the cool thing about symbols is that they can have their own animations apart from the main timeline. If that sounds confusing, no worries, I'm going to break it down for you. So for this demonstration, let's add another layer and add a shape to it. And we're going to add a keyframe, move this to the left, and give it a nice classic tween. And now we have to make a keyframe on layer 1 to keep that shape in the scene. Cool. So now you'll notice if you look here, that right now we are in scene one. So this whole timeline and all of these shapes are all in this scene. But if we double click this symbol, we can go inside of it. And if you look here again, you'll see that we were in scene one and now we're inside the star symbol. Everything else fades out some to show us only what's inside of this symbol, like all of these individual pixels that make up the shape. So this shape has its own timeline inside the symbol. And if we make a keyframe at frame 15, and move this shape down some, then add a classic tween, and then copy the first frame and paste it to frame 30, and then add another tween there. So now this bounces once. Now we click scene 1 to go back to the main timeline, and when we click play, that inside animation is going to keep repeating until our main timeline is over. So check this out. 3, 2, 1, bounce and again, and a half. So as the main timeline ends, so does the inner one. Now you might be wondering, why not just animate on the main timeline? What's the difference? Well, you can still animate this layer on the main timeline. So for instance, if we go to the last frame and move the shape over some, and then add a tween, you can see that you can do whatever you want with the symbol on the main timeline, but while it's doing that, it's going to constantly bounce up and down because of the animation that's inside the symbol. 
It can be a bit confusing, but I've set up a few examples of when these would be useful in your own animations. So in this scene, I have the whole background mapped out. But when I start drawing or working on characters in the foreground, it would be such a hassle to have to also worry about all of these background elements at the same time. So I can go inside one of these tree symbols, and if I play this, you see they all have their own movement frames, each and every tree. And when I go back out to the main timeline and test this, they all do their own thing, and I can focus on animating my characters without any problems or distractions. In this example, I just have this robot guy here. And he can move around and have a good time, while all of his flashing lights and moving parts will be animated without me having to constantly mess with him. So again, I can focus on just animating the robot himself, which is super helpful. So go play around with graphics, and I would love to see some of your awesome creation. There's a link to my Facebook in the description, and I can't wait to see what you guys make. I had a lot of fun with this episode, and I will see you guys next time. Thank you for watching.